Happy Tuesday! We are coming to you in November on a very, very <laughs> cold and rainy day. At least it's not sleeting. They promised no. sleep, but we did not get that promise. The weather has changed drastically in like a week. It was like 80 in a week ago. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, I'm Patty. I'm Carrie. And we are Studio R12 Stencils, um, and we do DIY videos and live Q&A on Tuesdays at noon. Um, almost every week that we've had a pickup or two lately but yeah it's pretty predictable yes and it we we think we got all that yep. fixed fingers crossed yes. so um lots of updates on yes. programs so it was very interesting interesting and reasons. it all happened at once yeah so, it, but, it really did but Boom. that's okay we're good to go now we have so many cool things to share with you we this week we do so um, excited let's start with our youtube channel if you are not already subscribed to our youtube channel you're going to want to do that we go live on Tuesdays on YouTube and Facebook, but then on YouTube, we also add tutorials at least once a week. Yeah. Um, we've started doing a lot of the short tutorials and... We have a big surprise coming right yes. after Thanksgiving. Yes. Might even start on Thanksgiving. Um, we haven't decided. But um, you're gonna wanna know um, when the releases come because it has mm -hmm. something to do with Christmas spirit. Absolutely. And it's it's a lot of Christmas spirit. We're yes. Gonna, we're gonna throw the at you. Absolutely. You're gonna we're gonna we are going to put you in the Christmas yeah, spirit. Yeah, yeah. If you don't get in the Christmas spirit after what we're gonna give you, um, yeah. <laughs> you're just a big old Scrooge. Um this so last week on YouTube we released a video that Patty did on water-based versus acrylic stain. So everything you need to know about yeah. stain and applying it and how it works. And, and it's water-based versus mm -hmm. oil-based stain. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's, yeah, you said, you yes, said acrylic. Yes, I'm used to our it's, acrylic paint, yeah. aren't I? <laughs> we, don't, we don't use the oil-based very often. Uh -uh. We've got them up there. I love the richness of them. But I've got to tell you, when I did this side-by-side, -side, you guys judge for yourself. Look at that video. I think it's eight minutes long. And I think we had a comment on that. Yeah. They look the same. And I had my memory in my head telling me that... This, this, the oil-based stain would look way different, and it did not. The oil-based feels better. It feels better, yeah. But then by the time you finish the other, you know, it can be the same that way. So, yeah, that was that was an interesting result for me. Yeah. But um, good to know about. Yeah, and then this weekend we are releasing a new box video. It's a DIY build it. Yes. So you're actually, and we have a really neat surprise. Dustin, um, who is behind this camera right here, put together a, a Mylar template for all of, you can use it as a cut shape pattern if you want to mark and use it for cutting. Mm -hmm. And it also has your holes for where you put your nails mm -hmm. so that you can mark those. It has where you put the hardware. So it takes some of that guesswork out. And then on that same page, there will be a PDF download that is just a free download that will give you your cut size, your dimensions, how to do it, um, all of that. And that will be on that page too. So that way you can make your own DIY at yeah. home and follow and, along. And you also want to make sure that if you are not already subscribed to our newsletter, that yeah, is, that's how you'll find out about that's this the stuff. place to yeah. be if you go to studior12.com while you're there mm -hmm. a big wheel will pop up and you can enter your email address and spin the wheel mm -hmm. and chances are pretty good that you will get a discount when you do that um and this you can only spin the wheel one time so if you're already on the newsletter yeah. sorry but this is for new new people who sign up we get asked that all the time but we have actually a really cool sale coming up this week that we have an unusual you're gonna want to have that newsletter because yeah. this one is um we had a, a a collision of two minds online uh -huh. um, nothing bad but just things didn't cooperate with each other and as a result you're gonna benefit to the tune of like 70 percent yeah, yes of discounts on some very specific items so you're gonna want to know where that is the link will get you there but you don't get the link unless you're on the newsletter list correct so um and speaking of sales we'll go ahead and talk about today's sale i'll share the link in the comments but today we are talking about our cookbook and tablet stand and this is, I think, one of our essential products to give mm -hmm. as a gift. Because as Patty and I were talking about earlier, it is the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. You give someone a painted cookbook and tablet stand, they can put their cookbook on it, 
to easily see their recipe. They can put their tablet on it to see a recipe or a step-by-step -step instruction on YouTube, but it doesn't have to be just used in the kitchen. It can be used in your painting room yep. to watch our videos. It can be used in the man cave for step-by-step -step instructions mm -hmm. that your guy is gonna want to see on whatever he's yep. tinkering with. But you do one, and then the next time you make a present for this person that comes out, you give them an insert and then you can, and you can insert <clears throat> a different art yep. for a different season. And then when they change their decorations from mm -hmm. country to lemons, then you can paint them a lemon one. And it's really, yeah, years ago nonstop. when I first started painting, there was an artist that had a bear, like, you know, the goose, um, the geese that you put on your porch, the I concrete have one. geese. Yeah. <laughs> so you buy them an outfit for the seasons, right? Well, so this bear had outfits that you would decorate the bear with. And so my daughter-in-law wanted one. So I made her the set. I made her the base of the bear and then made her outfits as, you know, special occasions. Here's your birthday. Here's your Christmas present. Here's this, here's that, you know, so it really, it's such a good gift because they store flat. Okay, so, um, and they are also reversible, and so, and they're really <clears throat> cheap, uh, affordable, um, you know, so you don't have to necessarily spend a whole lot of money to increase their joy, and it reminds them that you care, you know, so um, when you hand paint something, it shows you care, and all of these that I'm showing right now, this is um, our bird stencil, so this is a multi-layer bird stencil, so you can actually paint a bird by using a stencil. And then that one. Um, Glennis says that she has that bear. Oh, good, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, we have a couple people asking about the snowman. The mm -hmm. snowman one is not a stencil. <clears throat> we do believe we have the, an the old. The snowman itself is not a yes. stencil, but the words are, this is um, in a toll painting, decorative painting um, project that I did years ago. Um, so you can do that if you want to enter through that. Carrie will get you a link to the video and all of that kind of stuff. But um, also if you want to know about putting glitter over your paint or over your varnish, um, Carrie did a Halloween video that um, shows you how to do that too. So, but this one is where you can go when you have, if you want to take your painting like a further place, then you can go this direction. If you want to do something in between, this one is one that I actually, um, so this is a stencil, but then I took it over and colorized the things and gave them shading and some details. So if you want to do something in between, that would be what that looks like. This one is one where, and it might not be the best on black, but I want to show you a thing. When these get put together, so this is with a crackle finish and you can t use a command strip to put a different little icon on there. Am I in this one or this one right now? Okay. Um, so you can use a command strip right there, but you can do something different on the back side. So um, this can come off, you can do like something lighter, white, gray, whatever, and then it's a reversible, reversible stand. So you can make it into different colors. Um, but this one right here is a, like a watercolor background, with sponges and all that, but these roses are all painted with one of our multi-layer rose stencils. So super cool that you can do really difficult painting things with a stencil i think i agree and that is what we have been doing um today we're going to show you how to paint on one of these just kind of doing some basics how to do like a chalk effect this one is one that i painted um, this would look much better not on a black base so that you can reverse it but the red was really difficult and if you stick around to the end i'm going to show you what to do when your red won't pop Okay, and that is a tricky little thing. So that is gonna be at the end of this lesson. I wanna show you how to build one of these. So this is flat in its quarter inch um, MDF. And all of these bits and bobs come apart. Okay, so you've got just all the things. So you can reverse them all and do different colors on both sides. And this one, you actually have to stretch it just a teeny bit and it locks into a little hole right there. And then that guy, goes right on in there, pardon the squeaks. And then this little guy goes in the back. Let me show you that. Um, this isn't painted on the back so that it, it looks kind of ugly, but um, that just fits right on in there and slides and then that holds it up. So now you have a secure tablet, phone stand, cookbook stand. 
I use mine every stinking week. Um, I tend to be like I cook from scratch, so I'm chopping onions, chopping peppers, whatever all the things are. And I get a little bit bored. My husband, we've got open concept house. He'll be over watching golf. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> So uh, he, will, he will be doing that, and then way over on the kitchen side of things, I'm like, okay, the golf is on, the golf is on. And so I will have this playing videos or research or um, any of that kind of stuff that I'm in, interested in while I'm doing the everyday cooking part of things. So anyway, this has a little slot right there. All of your pieces fit in there. I love the ones that have the little embellishments on top. Dustin, would you go grab Coffeeology? I don't know that we made, did we make that into a product on um, R12 yet? Yeah, we will, we will get to it because it is super cool. If you are a coffee person. Yes, we do have that. Okay, yeah, this is one of my favorites. Thank you. Who's gonna grab it? Okay, so this is Coffeeology. And so he, this little nugget right back here is making him not lay flat, but isn't what wouldn't that be the best gift for somebody that is a coffee mm -hmm. person and then you know you take it away bring in a christmas thing and then you have you know you have just you're expressing them and i just love that now it would be more difficult to reverse this you'd have to do something maybe it could be cocoa so you could flip that guy over mm -hmm. and you could have your hot cocoa um art on there. We probably, what are the stencils that you have over there? Do we have something cooking? Um, I don't think so. We okay. have Chris, these are all Christmas okay. ones. So like Mrs. Claus cookies and hot cocoa or something like that. And that would make a cute reversed thing. Huh? Oh, it's stencil idea. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take this away and I want to talk about how to paint on these. Um, one thing that we came across today, we were painting the base coats on this guy. And when we were doing that, we did two or three base coats, which is good because you want it solid. And then if I add varnish as well, you're going to start getting thicker and thicker. So if you find that your pieces are tight when you put them together, um, taking a little bit of sanding and just right on that tab where they go together and they fit together, just take some of the layers down and you can put another little thin coat of black on there and it won't hurt anything. But sometimes two, three, four coats on both sides will make things not want to fit, but you only need to worry about that little teeny tab right there. So if that happens, then just a little sanding. Okay, so we've got black and we want to pretend like we are doing chalk. Okay, so chalk has been a raging, raging trend um, for a good amount of years now. Okay, so we're going to take some tape and do make sure that you are giving us a thumbs up if you like what you're hearing, like what you're seeing. If we've helped you paint, helped you not bleed under, because our brushes are amazing. Um, we need all the hearts we can get and all the thumbs up we can get. We've gotten a lot of hearts and thumbs up today. Yes. In yes. Love it. Okay. When we are doing chalk, oh, I've got one little piece that did not pop out. Little tiny chad there. When you're doing a chalk look, I like to take the chalk look and I like to mix my white color. So I'm using a cream color with a little teeny bit of gray. I want to gray it down and just give it like an almost not opaque look. And then our dome brushes are going to do the bomb diggity because they are amazing for making things look dusty. And if you're doing chalk, then things look dusty. Okay, so we're going to use our offset palette knife, not the big flat one. This little lazy Susan, guys, um, we got this off of Amazon. I've got paper towels stopping me from turning, but having little tool buckets for all the different things has been really wonderful. I am a fan. And you can get it in fun colors, which is what we're all about. A little bit of color. Um, someone pointed out that in my newsletter today, I made a bit of a mistake. I said that these stents, these, this surface was 13 by 18. It's actually 13 by 8. Ah, so yeah, yeah. I will send out a correction on that. But when you go into the collection, it says that it's 13 by 8 so that you kind of have an idea. Of and that's what you want to look for on mm -hmm. the website. So um, give me those stencils. So we have... Uh, we have 6,000, 7,000 almost uh, titles. I think we're at 6,800 and something right now. 
um, stencil titles. So we're gonna have a lot of things that will fit for all the seasons, dad gifts, woman gifts, kid gifts, like all the things. Um, so, you know, we have so many things that will fit on these surfaces. You just have to look at them by size and then that will tell you which ones will fit. And the sizes, when we do our sizes on our website, that's Studio, sorry, Studio R12, the letter R, the number 12. I don't know why I had to air write that. Um, but when we do our dimensions, we do the outside measurement of the mylar. And it, usually we have a half an inch on both sides inset so that you don't make a mess with your brush as you're going over your art. So if that helps you figure out sizes. Okay, so. We're gonna take our dome brush. Um, the dome brushes are currently in stock. Um, we did have sad news, the um, liner brush that we love. Um, it's so hard to find a good liner brush, you guys. This is the, it's a DecoArt product and it is a fabulous liner brush. If you have one, take good care of it because they are gone for good. Um, yeah, it's very, very sad. Sad day when brushes get discontinued, especially when they work. But um, so make sure if you like a product, you want the product. Um, some of the companies that we're dealing with are still complaining about supply chain. You cannot buy cardstock if you have not been a cardstock customer from a like a distributor. You can buy it like on Amazon or something like that. But if you want to buy it for manufacturing, you can't get it. Um, so and that's been going on for two years. It's, it's been a big, long problem. OK. Dome brush, magic for if you don't want to bleed under. If you've had problems bleeding under your stencils, this is the episode to watch, as well as Carrie's got a beginner guide to uh, painting. Most of our videos talk about this. We're going to use a dry brush. The dome brush is cut dome all the way across, and it doesn't allow, it won't, like I'm pushing hard. Okay, so you can see my hand going down, so I'm not, not like fake doing it. Um, but I'm pushing really hard and it will not allow those bristles to splay because when you push on the middle, that's the part that's touching these edges won't do that unless you, if you scumble around, you can get them to kind of make contact. But if you're just stippling, it won't happen. You will not bleed under because it, they're not pushing. Okay, so, and we don't have water in it, which means that um, it's not wet and running under your stencil. And then we use dry paint, no water in our paint. The brush itself is dry. I pick up just that little bit and we'll use Carrie's trick. I like this one. Um, Dustin, if you can get me here. So if I don't, if I don't wipe off or offload my paint, that's what's going to happen. Okay. And that's too much paint. It's too heavy. It is way, way, way too much. So if I dip in there, and then I offload three or four, five, ten times. I always say a different number. And then I come back over here. That's what I should be seeing. Okay, so I want to see just dusty look because this stuff, it's it's like still wet. Okay, and the wetter it is, the more likely you're going to bleed under. So you always offload. And then the longer you're using this brush, say you have 85 words or things on a, on a board, the longer you use it, the more paint will get up in there. And then you'll need to rub off just a little bit more when you're offloading. Oh no, people said that they're hitting the like and the love emoji and it's making sad and mad faces. Oh no! Um, <laughs> I'm not seeing <laughs> I'm not seeing those on my end, on oh, my end, no. it all feels good. So maybe I need wine. <laughs> maybe, I don't maybe um, maybe it just looks like that on your end. Oh, we trust you. We know that you yes, will not we, send us angry thank faces. Thank you for not sending yes. us angry faces. We love all the hearts and all the love. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> offload. And then I'm going to come over here. And now this is where you really want to offload because this needs to be evenly dusty. Okay, so we're going to go here. Just my pressure, like if I was trying to brush dust away, that's my pressure. Okay, not dirt not salt, like dust, just a little bit. So I'm just going to, I'm feather pushing on this and I'm going in little circles. How many of you are swirlers? I wanna know about that. And then I wanna know who's, who's maybe a little timid about trying it. If you're timid about trying the swirling, then um, get out your cardboard boxes that everything's getting delivered in these days and practice on those. Your stencil is reusable. 
It is washable. There's a video on how to clean your stencils. Um, so you can just use it again and again until it gets crusty and then you wash it and then you go again. You can use them hundreds of times. If you're painting with red, you're gonna wanna wash your stencil immediately after using it because red tends to bleed out into other colors. I have no idea why. Okay, um, so I've gone as far on, as I can. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. A note on the brushes um, from Cindy Braden. My bleeding under literally stopped as soon as I switched to your dome brushes. Yeah. They make stenciling so much easier. Flat, flat stencil brushes are horrible. I don't even know why they ever got started. Like, it doesn't make any sense because they don't work. Like, they cover, but they, uh, they don't work. Okay. Offload, make sure. Even if I didn't remember doing that, I'll go back and check to make sure I offloaded because the last thing you want to do is clean up bleeding under. We have a couple swirlers, Linda, Teresa. Yay. Kelly started using her palm to yeah. check and see mm -hmm. how much paint. So um, my bonus daughter is 10 and last week when she came here after school, or in the afternoon, we picked out a Christmas project for her to paint while she's here over the next couple weeks. And she's so funny because she does the hand test every time she it. puts paint on her brush. So she'll try it and then show me her hand. Is this okay? And then, so her whole hand is covered, <laughs> but she's not bleeding under. Yeah. And I'm excited when she gets and this she's project. 10. She's 10. Yeah. Yeah. And so when she gets her project done, it's going to take her a little while. She picked a big project. Um, and she's doing colors. And she's too. doing color. So yeah. it's. Uh, She'll it's, be multi masking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we will we'll be sure to show that off. I love it. When she gets I love it done. It. What is our um, deal on these guys? 30% off the entire collection. Oh, that's good. So that is. Yeah. Um, that, stencils. What surfaces are. That's we a good have. Sell. We, and so we have several designs for these stands. So we have basic, we have rustic, we have the curved top, we have super fancy mm -hmm. with scrolls. Yep. And then there's also several different designs for the inserts. So we have like the, the coffee, coffeeology. we have, yep. um, I think a snowflake one. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to choose from. And yeah. you're then, not gonna get bored. And then you can buy the stand by itself, the insert by itself, or you can buy them in sets with two inserts, four inserts, six inserts. Yeah. Like it's it's a full collection with several different options. Yeah, and the size of this is really cool because we invented this. Um, so like my husband's a woodworker from way back when I first started painting, um, he got his first scroll saw and I bought my first set of brushes at the same like day. We bought a book and we were gonna do this thing together with my friend Kathy and her husband and so we painted horrible things and it, it's funny to see backwards. Do we do we know where the snowman is? I think it's in your office. Yeah, you wanna see? We'll pull out number one. Project number one, his thumb is like this because Ted was using the scroll saw. <laughs> and you know, just funny, 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 funny. I do have a quick question mm -hmm. yep. from Janice. What do you do when paint builds up around the edge of the stencil and makes a ridge when you take it off? Right, so um, that's really good question. One of the things that you can do, my son Chris taught me this, um, so this like truly is a family business. Um, all the boys have helped us with all the trade shows and all the things we've done. And then um, two of them have worked full time with us and um, paint the things, teach the classes, do all that. Uh, but Chris noticed that when he blow dries and he makes the stencil flutter, then it prevents that from caking up and bleeding under. And also you would just use less paint and do more. You can't find it? No. Okay. Um, we'll find it next, <clears throat> for next also, week. Also, mm -hmm. I just lost it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the thick paint, thick layers um, can build up like that. So you wanna just light, light, light is the key. Yeah. Several light layers is way better than heavy layers. Um, okay, so let's peek. How many of you are peekers? So hands up if you're a peeker, and that means that we peek under the stencil. I think that this doesn't look quite bright enough, and so I want to do just a little bit more. So I'm gonna lay it back down. Peeking is such a beneficial thing to do because you just can 
tell where you need to go before you take everything off and you do all the stuff. Just lift a little corner and see if you've got it going where you want it. Okay, so I'm gonna go a little heavier. We have a lot of people saying that they are definitely swirlers. Good. And, um, we do have some people who say that they do a mix. Yeah. I tend to do a mix. I always, 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 always do my first layer swirl. as a swirl. Yeah. And then depending on how I want my project to look, I'll do coat probably three yeah. as a stipple. Today I was painting this Comfort and Joy. And who's this? This guy. Oh, I wanted to talk about that too. Um, this stencil is really interesting. Um, it's got really big openings. The bigger the opening, I tend to stipple. Um, but this also has built-in drop shadow. And the one on the wall back here, the Merry Christmas tall porch with the plaid, mm -hmm. that one also has a built-in drop shadow in the stencil. So you can move your stencil to do the drop shadow, or you can get stencils that have built-in drop shadow, which is super handy to have. Yeah. But the bigger the hole... I will switch to a dauber, and I want you to note these jumbo daubers, um, these go in and out of stock quite often, so be careful, get them when you want them. Um, two or three, if you're doing those 3D signs, you probably need a few more because oh it gosh. takes them a while to dry. <laughs> yeah, Carrie was doing a whole bunch of samples, and I think she used every one of them in the building. I did, I think I did too. <laughs> but, um, but so notice that these are also domed, and in the bigger holes and the bigger openings, I'll switch to one of these because it covers so much more space, but because it's shaped in that dome, it won't bleed under. So this, and but I still offload. So I'll load it and then I push it down over here and then I'll go to painting. So you can't get you, you probably could swirl with this. I haven't tried it, but I bet you could. All right, I'm gonna do another coat. Okay. So, and now what I could do, I'm gonna use this as kind of just like a what you could do for chalk and maybe not think of this as a beautiful finished project. If I wanted to, I could go through the middle of my letters and I could make it be like a little bit of a highlight through the middle. So I'm gonna show you what that would look like. I'm gonna drop low so I can show you what an ombre would look like too. And not enough. The minute I touched that, I could see that I was getting streaks and it was gonna to be too strong. So I'm just gonna swirl my way right through the middle. I always love the way this looks. Yeah, it's a really neat technique. I am so excited that you're painting all of these inserts for me to take home. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie's got a library system. She's like, okay, so I'm taking that one home for Christmas. I'll bring it back after. You know? <laughs> I did that today. And listen, when we show you the project, um, when we release the video and show you the project, I won't be able to show it to you physically because it'll be at my house. But when we tell you about it, then you're going to understand why. <laughs> okay, so this is what it would look like up the middle of these letters. Okay, so that's a super cool technique. And if I go old school and I take out a liner, the end of my brush, I can, let's do that instead of the liner. If I go old school, I can take and do a center dot and then descending dots on either side and I can emphasize that with just the back end of my paintbrush. So that's a super cool technique to do. Uh, so once you put your effect through the middle then you can enhance it with these descending dots. And I'm gonna go ahead and wipe them off because dots stay wet forever. Let's see if I can keep it in the line. Can. Okay, if I wanted to remove that, I'd get out my click eraser. And then I can just take that paint off with the click eraser and blot it. Clean it off. Oh, I cleaned off the whole thing. Okay, but that is what is cool about the click eraser. If the paint is fresh within five minutes, you're going to take all the paint off and you can continue painting without fixing things. Okay, so I'm going to drop that stencil back on top. And then I'm going to show you what it would look like if we did a little bit of an ombre all the way up from the bottom. Okay, so we'll go up the bottom of the letters, up to where I had already done that fade. And I'll give that a little patch right there. Super fun techniques, guys. These are so easy. You already know how to swirl. So this is just swirling with like a little teeny bit of control. 
meaning you're not going everywhere. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. And so that's super cool. Can you see it, Carrie? Ooh, I love it. So it's now what can we do to enhance that? Get that line back up so and I'll show you how house. to take it one more step. Oop. Hello. So I can go backwards one step. This is uh, number 36, by the way, for those color chart guys, and number 22 are the colors we're using today. I can go backwards to that mix color, dirty brush into that, wipe it off. Notice what happened. Okay, so this is the color, and then this is the color that's on my paper towel. It's brush mixing in here. When I swirl, it's taking that gray plus that and making it into a sub, like, smaller amount of shadow or mix color. All my words just went. <laughs> okay, so we're going to use that color, and we're going to go just at the base. And the important thing here is to make sure that you lessen up your pressure as you get to the top. It's not hard. It's just remembering to do it. Okay, so I don't want to get the light color all the way up to the top. If you need to switch to those smaller brushes, sometimes that can make it easier. And if I wanted to take it, I'll show you what this looks like, but if I wanted to take it one more up, I'll show you what this looks like. So now it's like, whoa, and I honestly think this is exactly where I would stop. But that looks just so amazing. It just, let me show Carrie. Oh, yeah. That so it just great. really, whoo, mm -hmm. you know, it's electric. I feel like we need to do the slide. Okay. So now if I want to take it one more, I go into straight up white. Number 27. Number 27. 27 and 28 are your blacks and your whites. And these colors, um, for those of you who don't know, and make sure that you are sharing um, the videos and our lives and stuff like that with your painting friends and crafting friends, your groups that you are on um, on Facebook with and stuff, because um, people don't know that we're out here showing you all these really cool tricks. And the people that know about YouTube channels and videos and all of that are really surprised that we give the content away and we don't have intentions to charge for it, yeah. um, I believe. I started painting when I had babies and I we had one car and my husband worked 12 hour shifts and he worked all of the daylight hour shifts you know he was gone for the whole like from noon until midnight you know kind of thing and so I couldn't go anywhere I had to get on my bike with the kids in tow and go that way there was no TV videos there were no painting videos and I always swore that if I ever really learned how to paint that I would share any way that I could. And so the minute I could do videos, I started. Yep. Okay, we're gonna pick up that white in a dirty brush and wipe that off. And then let's see what that looks like. Now this one, I won't take any further over than that cream color that I added. So we keep it down there at the bottom. This is gonna be, I think, a little too strong on a black background. Now I wanna fade, I'm getting a little bit heavy handed there. The smaller you're trying to keep your color, the smaller you want your brush to be. And I'm not changing my brush size right now, so. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Okay, look at that, isn't that amazing? So, if you had something strong going on here, this would probably be the right amount of color. Um, this would probably be really pretty with a, like a teal um, drop shadow or something like that. I mean, there, there could be so much fun that you could have with this this project. Okay, to finish this up, I would probably make Santa's sleigh be a little bit more, but I do want to show a little bit of controlled snow. Um, and I had that brush out earlier. There we are. Okay, so this is the number three quarter inch um, white wonder. Notice that it has, you're going to do it over here, Dustin? Notice that it's heavy down here, but it has little thin spikes up there. If you want to make grass, if you want to make beard, if you want to make um, the texture on an apple, if you're painting a realistic apple, if you want to make anything that has like fine lines, you want this brush. This is amazing. I've been using it for a million years. I feel like I, I start using a million with my a age. And I'm True. Gonna, they're either going to say liar or be like, yeah, I see it. Yeah, <laughs> um, I do. 
if um, just I will delete you from the page if you post that. Okay. Just a heads up. Um, quick question from Christina. Yeah. Um, if I swirl, if I lightly swirl, then I don't need to mod podge before I start. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I never even heard of using the mod podge um, to be a barrier when I used to teach in my shop in Portland. We and when we would tape 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 stretches, we call this stretchy tape because it actually when you bend it, like you can see, that's misshapen. So if I'm doing a tape border, it's very difficult not to have your tape stretch and then it'll waver. And then if you don't get it completely sealed down and then you stipple on top of that, it'll leak under. Yeah. And we do use a Mod Podge effect on that. So, um, but I have never used it on stenciling. So yes, you are correct. You do not need to okay. use that. So yeah. All right, so let's talk about controlled snow. Um, so we got our white paint and I've got that out. I'm gonna get our ketchup bottle for the grill with some water in it. I'm just gonna sprinkle some water on there. And you can see here. Yeah, yep. Uh, okay. Got it. <laughs> Train wreck with water on clean up on aisle five, Bob. Okay, so if I get my water, I wanna fully saturate my brush. And I'm going to pull some paint. I'm going to pull this down since we train wrecked. Okay, and it needs to look inky. If it looks too watery, then there's not enough paint in it. Okay, and then I'm going to get a heavy-handed, heavy-handled brush. This is my um, which one? Steve, she's looking Oval for you. Glaze. Oval glaze. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like uh, freeze, freeze frame. It's lunchtime, guys. I'm hungry. Hangry. Hangry. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna spatter off, always, always test off on your palette, okay? And then if I wanted to just spatter my edges, then I can, I'm, one more, this feels heavy to me. I aim my brush to where I want to spatter and I arch it around and that will lightly, that's still heavy lightly 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 go all the way around my edge see how i'm just trailing and then i'll turn my project if your project is painted on the back side you want to be on a towel or a paper towel and not on your wood surface because those spatters that are on here will end up on your art that's on the back side and you will be very sad so put it on a towel and spin the towel instead of spinning the project on your your surface i I'm trying to look this up now. That, oh. Pause. I'm buffering. Carrie's buffering too. Um, I believe that, she's hangry as well. I believe that brush that you have in your left hand is the clearly amazing filbert. Oh, you know what? This it is because it has the. It's not the gold handle. Yes. They. I think they're. Okay. I think they're um, kissing uh, cousins. Yeah. Um, I think. I think somebody's got <coughs> different color handle on it to make it's, it go with the line. It's been nice seeing your face. <laughs> Okay, so, all right, so anyway, that's how we keep those spatters in the corner. Now let's talk about doing spatters on a target. Okay, so we've got this 50 cents right there. If you want to hit that target, okay, I'm gonna definitely spatter off. Then what I do is if I'm, if I'm trying to snow, then I up here and hit high. If I'm trying to control, then I'm way low. So, and then I'm gonna be in front of where I wanna hit. So spatters usually go everywhere, but you can see that for the most part, I can control that by just lowering my brush that I'm anchoring. Okay, so that is how you can do that. And then if you want to snow, always test on your pal, always offload. We'll just call this offloading. And then if I want to snow everywhere, way up high, we'll snow evenly all over your project and you won't end up. So if you like the toothbrush effect, there's a toothbrush technique that you can do. It almost always, in my opinion, um, gives you a trajectory. So you'll get a shot across the thing and so your snow will not always look even. Sometimes it will, but it's not consistent. Right. So I feel like I... Yammer, yammer, yammer. Okay. Um, have we talked about sealing these? 
We have not talked about sealing these. Okay, um, so Melinda asked, what kind of sealer would you mm -hmm. use to keep the inserts clean while scrubbing them? Such a good question. Okay, so I would use Dirt Clear polyurethane and I would follow it up with either one of these waxes. Um, the Clapham's Beeswax is good for food safe products and then this is a Minwax um, finishing wax and both of these do phenomenally well. I have had things that I've used this on over this um, outside, mm -hmm. okay? But the finish is really silky, it's beautiful. Okay, so that is a way, and then, on, hold that thought. And it's also going to depend on what you do with it. If you glitter over it, or if you add embellishments to it, then you'll want to use the Krylon 1311, mm -hmm. because it is going to be a spray varnish. Yes, so this is the 1311, and so on Mr. Snowflake Guy, you could do a couple of things, you could, if you do spray him after you glitter him, like, and you knock off the excess glitter with like a mop brush, and you can get, it'll walk all over the place, but you can, you can see it falling there. So you mop, you knock that off, and that cleans him up. Mm -hmm. Get it out of his face. Snowy man, he's got glittery eyes. Okay, so you get that excess off, and then you give it a strip with your spray in two directions and you should be good to go at that moment um you this isn't going to stay up as much time as like your coffeeology coffeeology i would take my varnish and i would varnish it a couple of times and then i would wax it with something mm -hmm. so that's what i would do um but the 1311 is magic stuff um, if you ever sign your projects with a sharpie or whatever or use markers you have to use a spray because your varnish will erase your marker I think there's alcohol in it or something. Okay. Ask me how you know. Yeah. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, my brush water is filthy. So I'm going to use this water bottle and show you how the varnish technique works. We talked about this at the beginning. We try to keep these shorter, but um, you guys asked, so I'm going to answer. So I'm getting my, my sponge saturated. And I'm going to find a paper towel. And I'm going to like squeeze out the moisture. And then, um, who can I pick on? Um, okay. I want to pick on something, but everything's got spatters on it. Are you dry? Spatters? Okay, watch. Let's see no. how. <laughs> Spatters stay wet forever, so they seem like they're okay. So we'll get our matte varnish. The reason I wet this, and it's actually not very wet, I kind of squoze the heck out of it, I guess. Squoze. So leave us a leave us a comment below wherever you are watching if you're going to grab some of these for the holidays. I already have my cart loaded. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, they're on sale. I'm getting them. We're we. Um, I'm gonna grab a what couple great of gifts, and they and they ship flat. Yes. So what? Well, what a great daughter-in-law gift. Oh my god, my, my mm -hmm. granddaughter wants to own a patisserie. So like, what a great thing for her to have to you know do sure. her research and all the things. Okay, wet sponge, varnish, and what will happen is the water in my wet sponge will pre-wet my surface. And it won't allow those pesky drag marks. And it goes on so smooth and so fast. Because the sponge was wet. And because the sponge is under coating with water. And so that's one coat. I would let that dry. And then I would buff it with a paper bag. And then I would repeat, buff it with the paper bag. And then give it a coat of wax. And then you're going to be good to go. Gonna be golden. Okay, popping red. We promise to have popping red. Yep, that is and that, the only other things I had written down. Yeah, and then if you guys want to um, know what's coming up with our holiday inspiration, make sure that you do um, subscribe and ring that bell so that you get notified. Okay, moving those things and grabbing this guy. Okay. 
I have 85 projects sitting out here. Okay, when I did the reds for this, I used a number 18, which is like a burgundy. This is, um, I think, deep burgundy and deco art um, colors and whatever. I think we, I don't, anyway, don't know what it's called in Sherwin-Williams, but then I went over the top of it with this red. The problem with reds is reds don't have a lot of pigment. The pigment's very expensive in yellow and red. And so the companies that sell paint usually do not give you like a ton of pigment, okay? So then I picked up this color, then Dirty Brush, and then I put in some persimony color, um, number 67, and that makes it have like a highlight. If you put white in with it, you're gonna make pink, okay? And because this has orange in it, it it makes a nice highlight for that. And that is what you see at the very top of these letters. But then to get them richer, and where did I put my paint? These two? Uh, yeah, these two. <laughs> okay, to make them richer, what you can do, this is the media acrylic paint. This is primary, um, primary magenta. Mm -hmm. And these colors, this is, acrylic paint with no filler. So there's no filler mixed in here, no grays, no whatever they use for fillers. Um, and it is their magic things because you, you will never base coat with these. Um, that is, you're never going to, because you'll never get a base. Um, but if you want to glaze, they're incredibly powerful, really incredible. And so you can lay your stencil right on top. And glazing, let's get this all lined up. Couple pieces of tape. Anytime you think you're gonna do something fancy, just tape down. Like, don't, don't skip on security for your project. Okay, so we'll take a smallish brush. And then I can take that paint and I'm gonna just offload, use that whole stack of okay. napkins. <laughs> offload just right in that spot, just get a little bit built up in my um, brush. And then you can just simply glaze right over the top. And it makes, I'm gonna do one side of this. I've already done this, so I don't know if doing it, then doing it, then doing it is gonna make a difference, but I'm gonna. Do a fade. I am stippling because I want it to be more strong. Let's see if we can see a difference. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So this is the increase in the drama, if you will, of the red, the beauty of the red. And then while I'm looking at these letters, I'm not getting that on the bottom as much as I want. So I'm just going to do that same technique we did on the sleigh rides stencil. Just do the base and it'll be a beautiful fade. Okay, let's take a look at that. Yeah, so that intensifies that. And then one thing I didn't do earlier is I did not, I dotted my, um, my dots with the back end of a dome brush. So I gave them just a dot and I can go onto those and give them just that little punch that they needed. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that and that so just good. electric. So that is our lesson today. Thank you for sticking around for all of our DIY fun and shenanigans. Uh, we will see you on Tuesday next week at noon Eastern time. <laughs> <laughs>